In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of a potential energy surface, which is a very important representation of how the energy of a ground state, an excited state, really any quantum state of a molecule, depends on nuclear coordinates. As an excited state engages in a photophysical or photochemical process, it navigates potential energy surfaces. It moves around on potential energy surfaces. And so understanding what you're looking at when you're looking at a potential energy surface is important for appreciating how photochemical reactions work. Okay, so what is a potential energy surface? Well, it shows the energy of a molecular state as a function of the nuclear coordinates. And, and most commonly, the nuclear coordinates are vastly reduced in dimensionality. So we take, for example, a very complicated molecule and reduce it down to a single important coordinate, very often a reaction coordinate associated with a photochemical reaction, for example, or a photophysical process. And we represent how the energy of that molecule or molecules, as the case may be, changes as that coordinate changes. So for example, here we have actually two potential energy surfaces represented on the diagram you see here. The y-axis is energy, the energy of the ensemble, and the x-axis in this case is labeled Rmn and is the distance between m and n. And so out on the right where Rmn is very large, we have a large separation between m and n, so we can represent that with a large gap, for example, between m and n. And on the, on the left-hand side, you know, we're, we're getting to a situation where M and N are, are much closer together in space. That's the x-axis of a potential energy surface. It plots some kind of reaction coordinate or nuclear coordinate within a single molecule, some kind of geometric representation of the molecule, where out to the right generally means more loosely bound, more farther separated, so on and so forth. The lines and curves here represent the energy at various values of R and N for different types of states. And the difference on this diagram, and this is very common in potential energy surfaces, is that the higher surface is an excited state, what we call an excited potential energy surface. And what's shown on the bottom is the ground state potential energy surface. And we can show transitions between the excited and ground potential energy surfaces using arrows, for example. And that's shown at a few different points on this graph. Now, an important point is the energy that's plotted is the electronic energy. At a given value of Rmn, the nuclear coordinates are the same. And so what we're seeing is the effect that a change in, for example, electron configuration or orbital shape or orbital energy makes or orbital occupation makes on the energy of the state, whether it's excited or ground. Above each curve, vibrational levels exist at each point along the x-axis. So here I've shown some vibrational levels way out here on the far right, with M and N relatively far separated. Distinct vibrational levels exist there. Different vibrational levels exist, for example, at this other point on the ground potential energy surface. And I should mention some important um, points on potential energy surfaces that are worth keeping in mind. The maxima and minima are very often worth keeping in mind or, or at least noting. So here, for example, we have a minimum. This can be thought of as an intermediate. And you've probably seen this before in the context of a reaction coordinate diagram or reaction profile diagram from your organic or general chemistry courses. A minimum in potential energy is a place where a structure can live in a relatively stable situation, right? It's an intermediate. Maxima are also important, and these are what we call transition states. Because they're maxima in energy, the molecule will not stay there long, right? It will move to a lower energy state spontaneously, and so it's, it represents kind of a hump on the way to some kind of photophysical or photochemical transition. It represents an activation barrier. If we want to think about how a molecule proceeds through a photophysical transition or a photochemical reaction, as the case may be, we, what we want to do is follow it as it moves along one or more potential energy surfaces. We allude to this in the video on 
different types of photochemical reactions and how we can classify them based on how the molecule moves up between or along potential energy surfaces. Here it's going to be helpful to kind of formalize this and give a name to the point that we follow on potential energy surfaces to chart the trajectory of a molecule as it engages in, in some process. And we're going to call it the representative point. It is a point that represents the nuclear coordinates as a molecule engages in a particular process. So, for example, in this particular context, this is a process, and the details are not important for the time being, but uh, we'll come back to them later, a process known as excimer formation, where we're starting with a photo-excited molecule, M. You can see it's represented here as M star, indicating that it has some excitation energy. And it comes into contact with another molecule, N. This is actually going to be an exaplex, not an excimer, because let's say M and N are not the same thing, but in any event, exaplex formation. So they start out at a large distance from one another. The representative point, we might say, starts here. As the molecules approach one another, the representative point moves along the excited state potential energy surface in this direction. And at some point, the ensemble of M and N reaches a critical point right here where we are now at an intermediate structure. And this is the exaplex. That exaplex can emit a photon. And we can talk about the representative point moving from one potential energy surface to another. That is a photophysical transition. Here it's a radiative transition. And then we can talk about dissociation. Now, as the representative point moves out to the right, M and N separate again, but now M is in its ground state, as is N. And so this is, a, this is a distinct trajectory, it's a distinct mechanism for this process of excimer formation and emission of a photon that gives us insight into the nature of excimers. Great insight, actually. One thing we can notice right away is that this arrow on the left is not as long as these arrows on the right, indicating that the wavelength of light emitted from the exaplex is going to be longer, its energy will be lower, than light emitted from essentially M by itself, with, when N is at a far enough distance away that it exerts little to no influence on the energy structure and, and dynamics of photo-excited or excited M. So, long story short, the representative point on a potential energy surface diagram charts a trajectory across one or more potential energy surfaces and gives us a mechanism, almost like a movie, right? As the representative point moves, the structure changes, its geometry changes, the energy changes in a way that the PES diagram shows to us directly, and it, it gives us a, a very vivid picture of how the reaction takes place. And this is why these are so sought after. They give very detailed mechanistic information about how a reaction takes place, particularly photochemical reactions involving excited potential energy surfaces.